the shooting range. In this episode, pages of history, elephants and Ferdinands, special trying out the new weapon loadout menu, and metal beasts, the double Chinese fish bed. Many pilots have first-hand knowledge of the MiG-21 fighter family. Fewer people are familiar with their Chinese versions. The J-7 Modification 2 is almost identical to its Soviet siblings, while the E version boasts a unique wing. But how about a double MiG? Surprisingly, that's the kind of task the Chinese aviation engineers once received. And here's what they made. The aircraft's power plant is two turbojet engines with afterburners. Self-sealing fuel tanks are found in the wing and the fuselage, while the nose cone hides a radar system. Fixed armament consists of a 23mm autocannon with an ammo pool of 200 rounds. The aircraft can also carry conventional bombs and rockets, as well as infrared and radar-guided air-to-air missiles. The key part of this machine is its power plant. Two engines provide a high thrust-to-weight ratio, which in turn means excellent dynamics and climb rates. And no one ever thought the regular MiG-21 had a shortage of it in the first place. The increase in power didn't affect the maximum speed, however. It's limited by the wing's capabilities, much like on its predecessors. We definitely wouldn't recommend accelerating past 1,360 kilometers per hour near the ground unless you want to turn into a starfighter. Now, one might assume that adding another engine would make the aircraft big, heavy, or clumsy, like some Phantom. But it actually didn't. The increased size had little effect on maneuverability. The J-8 does a great job at turning towards the enemy, and you don't really need much more from a top fighter. It has two types of missiles against enemy air. The IR-homing PL-5B for close range and the radar-guided Uspida for long distances. Both do their jobs just as well as their counterparts from other nations. Now, the fixed armament of the J-8 leaves much to be desired. Its ammo pool can only last 3.5 seconds of continuous use, and with a low fire density, it's far from the best choice for gun duels. As for countermeasures, it's a mixed bag for this fighter. I mean, it does have some, which is already a matter of envy for some competitors. The Mirage, the Draken, the Starfighter, the Nesher, and the F-1 fighters can only have flares in front of their noses. But there are only 64 of them, and even despite their increased caliber, they might not last the entire battle. The Mirage, the Draken, the Starfighter, the Nesher, and the F-1 fighters can only have flares in front of their noses. But there are only 64 of them. And even despite their increased caliber, they might not last the entire battle. Close air support isn't the strongest role for this Chinese fighter. You can destroy tanks with its rockets and 500-pound bombs, but it's a tricky task without a ballistic computer. What the J-8 does great is clearing the skies of enemy aircraft, providing a major contribution towards victory and ensuring the safety of Allied vehicles. The Ferdinand self-propelled guns occupy a special place in the history of German armored vehicles. There are so many myths about their creation and battle engagement that these machines are no doubt legendary. They also had just as legendary a predecessor, the Porsche Tiger. By the way, many made-up stories and misconceptions accumulated around the wartime activities of the Porsche company. You can often hear that the SPG was actually the idea of Ferdinand Porsche himself. They'd say Porsche was making his Tiger for a competition, but lost to Henschel and decided to use the hulls for the SPGs. In fact, Porsche was only a design bureau back in those years, nothing else. Both Tigers were made according to official contracts, with Steyr factories assembling both Porsche Tiger and Ferdinand machines. No independent action was allowed in producing vehicles, of course. Due to urgency, the Germans put the Tigers into production with no preliminary testing, right off the blueprints. 
No wonder the first tanks had heaps of issues and assembly plans were shattered. The Porsche Tiger was the most notable issue producer. It had a new, unique suspension, new air-cooled engines, and an electric transmission. Unlike other German tanks, it had rear-leading wheels, while pneumatic brakes were in the front. No one had any idea about their real-world performance. And soon, the number of issues became so overwhelming, they had to stop the assembly lines for Porsche Tigers. What could they do next? They could try to polish both Tigers, but didn't they have enough issues with just one? On the other hand, discarding an entire project would be a shame with so much time and effort spent. So the Germans found a compromise. The Henschel Tiger would be mass-produced, while the Porsche Tiger designs would be used to create a self-propelled gun. It was still a complicated task that required new solutions, but Porsche engineers weren't new to bold experiments. The first thing they had to solve was the layout. The new, more powerful cannon had such a long barrel that they couldn't simply replace the turret with a casemate. The German army already had SPGs with a casemate in the rear and engines right below it. It made repairs difficult even with open-top compartment vehicles, so they had to find another solution for the Ferdinand. So the engines and the generators were placed in the center. Now only the casemate had to be removed to access the electric drives. The suspension units were outside so they could be replaced in the field, while the road wheels didn't overlap. The engineers were worried about their brainchild. They didn't have enough time to polish the Porsche Tiger, and yet they had more issues to work on. Could a 65-ton SPG be reliable? How do you tow and repair it? How would the electric transmission perform in battle? The Ferdinand's first actual combat went off the plan. Originally, they had to follow the infantry and lighter vehicles, providing covering fire. But during the Battle of Kursk, the Ferdinands found themselves in the front and in a minefield. No wonder so many of them became immobilized. Moreover, the summer of 1943 was hot and dry, leading to dust clogs and overheating in the engines. Still, this machine was theoretically the best in the world in terms of armor and firepower at the time. By winter, they'd gained enough experience in employing the Ferdinands, so in December of 1943, the remaining machines were sent to Austria for a major overhaul. The SPGs received commander's cupolas, machine guns for the radio operator, and a new toolbox in the rear. A month before the overhaul, the Ferdinands were renamed into Elephants, which led many to mistakenly believe that the Elephants were improved Ferdinands. In fact, both names were used in parallel. After the overhaul, the Elephants were sent to Italy, where they demonstrated notable performance. They say there was a battle where two Elephants fought around 50 American tanks for 10 hours and damaged roughly 30 of them. It's hard to say how much truth there is to it, but there's no doubt that they might well have pulled it off with their armor and firepower. Later, some of the Elephants were brought back to the Eastern Front, where they remained until the end of the war. The Porsche engineers took a great technical risk developing their Tiger, and it certainly paid off. The Ferdinands, based on that Tiger, sustained two years of heavy battles and earned their fame as fearsome machines. Not long ago, pilots of some top aircraft received an updated suspended armament selection menu. We know how much you wanted this feature, and honestly speaking, we're a bit tired of manually composing dozens of weapon loadouts ourselves. So let's talk about these new opportunities. We'll start with the list of aircraft that enjoy this new system. Currently, eight machines of different nations have it available. A couple of American A-10s, the German MiG-23 MLA, and the Su-22 UM-3K, today's Metal Beast, the Chinese J-8, the top Italian Starfighter and French Mirage planes, and the Israeli Kfir C-2. But very soon, with the Danger Zone update, more top planes will receive the custom loadouts, as well as all Phantom and MiG-21, 23, and 27 planes, which will increase the total past 30 machines, and more are coming. To create your first loadout, select a plane, go to Suspended Armament, and press Create in the bottom left. You'll see a line of squares representing your plane's hardpoints. If you click on a square, you'll see a list of weapons you can load onto this hardpoint. 
Aircraft upgrades and unlockable modules will add to the list of available weaponry, as expected. It makes sense to consider possible activities and battle conditions when creating a loadout. You're unlikely to need bombs and air-to-surface missiles in air combat, so why take them? The opposite is also true. No use taking a full set of AA missiles for mixed battles. You can only create a custom loadout in your hangar, not in battle, so think through future scenarios in advance. For instance, we don't recommend simply going for the top weapons on attack aircraft. Having a few different sets is better. There is more than one reason for that. First, each bomb and missile increases your respawn cost. It would be a shame to not be able to take off at all because you're only missing a few points. You wish you could drop a few bombs, right? Second, each weapon has its own mass that affects the flight performance of the carrier in a major way. There's no sense in carrying a bunch of heavy bombs if you expect to suppress enemy AA defense with guided missiles. You'll have way better chances with no flight performance penalty. On some machines, it's possible to lay out the same weapon set in different ways. Pay attention to the type of your ordnance in that case. For instance, large caliber bombs can be dropped with equal precision from both the wing and the belly hard points, while rockets are more convenient when they're closer to the center of your plane. Bear in mind that payload capacity is limited. You won't be able to take enough bombs to prevent takeoff. As for different wing loads, it's a bit trickier. If you fill out all the hard points on one side and leave the other empty, the game will warn you about it and won't allow you to save this loadout. However, it doesn't mean all your loadouts have to be symmetrical. You can have an uneven spread of the weight, but only within reasonable limits, individual for each plane. Well, that's it for the loadouts. Get creative, give them unique names for quick navigation, and favorite them to find them faster. Share your experience in the comments. Meanwhile, we'll be answering some of your questions. The first question was sent by a player called Dio Helang Ramadan. Why can't I launch TV-guided rockets or bombs at night? Hi, Dio. There's no mistake here. Such munitions can't be used when it's dark. The reason behind that is that their homing devices seek out points or groups of objects on the ground with a high contrast and use them as guidance. And they simply can't do that at night. Tithanos asks, does the nuke get unlocked at 6.7 or 7.0? Hi there. Currently, the nuclear bomber becomes available at a BR of 6.7. It's either the B-29 or the 2-4. Another question comes from Pahor95. How do I use suspension on a Japanese MBT? Hi, Power. All the settings you need can be found in controls, ground vehicles, suspension control. As for tactics, you might need the suspension in closed positions, such as to improve your depression angles or decrease the visibility of your tank's outline. 439 Sparky1 writes, Do you pick comments to read for the next episode throughout the entire week? Hi, Sparky. As a rule of thumb, we collect comments from multiple aired episodes. So if your question isn't there in the next episode, chances are we haven't gotten to it yet. And the last comment for today was written by Blaue Stoffel. You should also have rated the turning circle for the wheeled tanks. Hey there. It isn't important enough to have a full stage dedicated to it, so we didn't show it in the triathlon. But we can have it right here if you want. Let's line up the participants and go. The best result is shown by the German machine. Then we have the Centauro, then the Chinese, American, and Japanese vehicles showing similar results. And the biggest circle belongs to the Ruikat. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment. And the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to leave a like. Remember to give your smart missiles a pep talk before you launch them for that extra speed. Share your thoughts and comments. And see you next week.